Today we have a smorgasbord of fine suits to choose from, all thanks to Brad Pitt and George Clooney, as two of the best dressed con artists of all time. Soon to appear in the movie Wolves, which though looks promising as a movie, lacks teeth for a view of suits. So I've chosen to look at one of their finest hours together in Ocean's Eleven. So I really cannot tell whether these are good looking guys or not. And as a typical man, they just look like guys to me. But my wife assures me there's a slight difference. She says Brad Pitt is handsome, while George Clooney is charming. So let's see who fares better in a suit, handsome or charming. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits, where we find inspiration for how to dress well in suits from the best dressed men on the screen. After his release from prison, Danny Ocean leaves his government issued duds behind and rises out of the sartorial sewer wearing a shepherd's check sports coat in brown with a red overcheck those fewer red lines that run throughout the jacket. He has paired it with a dark chocolate shirt and dark brown pants. He has gone for a striking monochrome look, but kept it dynamic with the check jacket and the dark shirt. A very nice opening shot, full marks to George. Brad Pitt's character is a little more flash, literally and figuratively. Under a brown double-breasted suit jacket, he wears an extremely shiny silver shirt and matching necktie. This is not a look for anyone that wants to be low key, I feel there's a little Tyler Durden in his character if Tyler wore suits. I've got to say it's one of those I love it but I could never wear it outfits. It's a daring look that belongs in Vegas, 10 out of 10 for being full on Brad Pitt. It's always a good idea to be true to yourself, no one can do you better than you. But like a dark knight to Brad's glimmer, George has arrived to tone the table down. He's wearing a classic dress down look for a suit. His peak lapel black suit is twinned with a black turtleneck. He raises the stakes in class to Brad's glitz. The two characters are writ large with these two contrasting choices in clothing, each to their own, but George gets my vote. The Vegas sunlight has brightened up their wardrobe's color palette. George is wearing a threaded, textured mid-gray suit with an open neck collar white dress shirt. It's a nice balance between formal and casual, and a white shirt always looks fresh and relaxed in the heat. Brad has a lighter gray suit, suitable for his coloring, but he has livened it up with a strong pinstripe shirt so it doesn't look too muted. And of course, he has a wide collar spread over the jacket lapels with typical Brad Pitt flair. And he has a high waistband with no belt, which adds to the sleekness. I love to see men wearing suits differently and really embrace the individuality you can express through your suit. Although I would wear George's suit myself, I have to give the winning points to Brad in this case. Again, Brad is wearing the same peak lapel gray suit as before, with a very similar pinstripe shirt, but with a much gentler contrast between the stripes, making it feel less showy than earlier. To me, every suit is a three-piece suit. No suit is complete until you get the right shirt to match. For every suit I own, I have at least one favorite shirt that completes it. Don't underestimate the importance of the right shirt. It can make or break a suit. And interestingly, there is no vent on this jacket. It's an Italian variation, which gives the suit a sleek and uncluttered aesthetic when you are standing but it can make it a little difficult when seated. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other menswear enthusiasts. Thank you. George has a fondness for sports coats, especially check ones. He has matched this blue check jacket with a beige shirt with a green tinge. I wouldn't have thought it an obvious match, but it works well. If you're not particularly good at matching colors, the best approach is to simply hold them up to each other. If you already have the jacket, wear it to the clothes store while looking for a shirt. Learn from women who are definitely better and more skilled at shopping than men. Hold the shirt up to your neck to see if the color works with you and the jacket. If you think it looks pleasing, then you have the right shirt. If you're not sure, then it's wrong and try another shirt in another store. I love the planning stage of a heist movie. All of the very characters from the distraction, the pickpocket, the safe cracker to the loose cannon are gathered up in one room. It's so much fun and you know there isn't any way it's going to go as smoothly as the plan. Here, you can instantly tell who the masterminds are just by the way they are dressed. George is wearing a black suit with a white shirt and mother of pearl buttons, and a wide open collar just to add a casual element. I like this look especially on George as he looks sharp while not appearing too stuffy. This look makes him authoritative but approachable. I'm really pleased with the small growing community we have here, so please subscribe and it'll keep me making these videos, especially the comment section. You gentlemen and ladies are fantastic in the comment section. Even when you completely disagree with me, you do so in such a beautiful and professional and polite manner. I really like it. So keep those comments coming. I enjoy reading them and I read every single one. And then there's Brad, being very Brad again. I'd swear his collars are getting higher as the movie progresses, and as if it weren't large enough, he has turned it out over the jacket but I think he has done an excellent job with the color. 
The chestnut shirt livens up the grey suit colour and although in strict classic men's style the shirt should always be lighter than the suit to bring attention to your face, in this case I think the colour achieves the same goal. I think I'll give the points to Brad this time. I could actually wear that shirt, although a little more conservatively, I would tuck the collar under the jacket. But once again, both men dressed extremely well. Let's take a break. Although I'm primarily focusing on the two stars, I have to point out this wonderful fitting scene with Saul, one of the secondary characters. I doubt most of us will ever experience this level of service, even if we buy a fully bespoke suit. But Saul has to play a millionaire convincingly, so it's been fitted with the best. An imported silk fabric, apparently. It's a light grey double-breasted peak lapel suit with a visible thread running through it, matched with a lighter grey shirt and a necktie of grey and gold. Very sophisticated, but probably for a man of a certain age. Brad Pitt is dressed down for once, as he wants to remain low-key. He's wearing a double-breasted peak lapel black suit with a blue denim shirt and dark blue tie. Double-breasted jackets always have peak lapels as a rule. I'm not sure why and I can't offer any objection. I've never seen a notch lapel version for comparison. And as if to one up Brad, George is also wearing a black suit with a blue shirt. This is interesting to see how a different shade of blue can make a big difference. And I think George's shirt has the edge. What do you think? And to meet his ex, he has briefly switched to a light blue shirt. Black suits in general are very limiting in what shirts you can match them with, which is why it's not a great choice for a first suit. But George has adapted well in this movie to many situations, a good lesson in how to wear a black suit. If you're ever wondering what to wear to a special night out, Brad's wardrobe in this movie provides plenty of inspiration. Here we have another distinctive outfit, a visible weave mid-grey suit with peak lapels in an unusual configuration pointing down, a luminescent shirt in purple and blue and a gold tie. Is it just me or is it not as flashy as it sounds? Or am I just getting used to his style in this movie? And as if things weren't fun enough, now we get to see Brad in disguise as a doctor with brown hair, glasses, and what one might describe in his lexicon as a normal suit. A beige fabric with a nice texture running through it, a white shirt, and a light necktie. But not for long before he's back in true Brad style with burgundy shirt and a black pinstripe suit. Brad's suits are actually not extravagant, but his shirt choices define the flamboyant style it just goes to show how a shirt can make or break an outfit, or change the circumstances under which it can be worn. And to prove my point, here's Brad in one last shirt, his loudest yet, but again paired with a neutral notch lapel suit. So in the end, I would be hard pressed to decide who is dressed better. George is certainly dressed in more wearable everyday outfits. He looks sharp and charming at all times, but never dazzling. Brad might dress flamboyantly, or even outlandishly, depending on your own taste, but he wears them well and they reflect his character well. So in the end, who's dressed better? Is it George in his sharp, wearable clothing or is it Brad in his very stylish, some might say outlandish clothing? Let me know what you think in the comments. So thank you for watching to the end and I'll catch you in the next video. Eagles. City of seagulls.